Hi, I'm Jason Levine. This week on Make It, she was a fashion blogger before most of us even knew what a blog was. Now Rachel Wen is living proof that you can be authentic, smart, and party. <laughs> Well, Rachel, it's so awesome to have you here with me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I know, really great to see you in I person. I love your living room. Thank you very much. Yes, I designed it myself. Very chic. With about 16 others. And <laughs> very chic indeed. So this is where I wanted to start because you are truly someone who is very multifaceted. You started with your blog, That's Chic, and you've kind of segued into YouTube and you've got this huge emerging audience. You tell stories in a way that is so unique and so gripping and engaging, but I thought maybe you could start by giving our viewers kind of a little bit of the background of how you how you kind of started in the blogging era, really before the boom of like the fashion blogs started to happen and really made made your name what it is today. Thank you so much for all the kind words. Yeah. Um, it's really sweet of you. Uh, yeah, so I started my blog like 10 years ago. Uh, I was in high school and I was living in Irvine, which is like by Forbes, the world's like one of the safest cities. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like a total bubble. bubble. My parents were really strict. So I had the blog. It was like my outlet. And I just always considered it a hobby, like uploading photos of myself, outfits. I started off with like taking photos, like clothes on the ground. And someone's like, why don't you try it on and take a photo? I'm like, Great idea. Great idea, right? Yeah. Great idea. So I started doing that. And then, you know, it just kept evolving. And then I think I like after my third, fourth year, advertisers started to take notice of that. So it really started right. to become like an industry around then. Right. And this is kind of when also, right, at that time, you were able to kind of monetize through click through ads and stuff and really kind of make this like yeah. a side project that was bringing you some additional income and yeah. more exposure to your audience. Yeah. I, well, I didn't know that you could make money off of blogging for like a long time. Right. Eventually, I started getting like gigs where they would pay me to do something right. to post about their clothes or something. So right. it really helped me pay my way through college. Nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my parents were like, like, oh, okay, she's on to something. We're <laughs> right. going to leave her alone for a little bit. Kids take note. A blog can pay for college. <laughs> it can. It can. So now, how did you make the jump to YouTube? And I know once you actually even got there, or in advance of getting there, it took you some time to really publish that first video. Um, like I said, it was just a hobby for a while through college. And even after college, I uh, pursued a career in more corporate side. I was uh, designing denim at a jean company and okay, so similar industry similar interest yeah, yeah. still within the fashion industry okay, yeah. creating content uh, for a shoe company so I was very much like always being creative but something about blogging felt very superficial and kind of vapid like okay how many photos of myself can I post up you know like it gets old again kind of in the sort of pre-selfie era too right I mean pre-selfie era yeah, yeah yeah so you finally kind of make the jump to YouTube and I think you mentioned to me that you shot some stuff and it took you like a year yeah. Before you actually put it out. So why was that? Like, what, you know, for someone who was, again, being so open about things, seems like you'd want to kind of just get it right up there. Yeah. Well, between two jobs, my design denim job and the shoe company job, in that moment, I was like, you know what, maybe I should start a channel, but I had no idea how to do it and didn't know how to edit videos. So I just kept recording myself, not really knowing what to do with the content, because every time I try to put it together, I'm like, uh, this is a disaster. Right. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> But I think having that year of practicing how to be on camera taught me how to edit myself. And you had no otherwise formal training there. I mean, you were kind of just learning on the go, probably watching, I'm sure, some other YouTube things at the time and getting some ideas, maybe. <laughs> I actually didn't watch a lot of YouTube. I, I do watch, like, Casey Neistat. There's a couple yeah, people yeah. I watch. Yeah, right, right. But I try not to let that influence, influence me. Influence you. Because I've learned, too, with, like, blogging. Um, I didn't want to be influenced by other bloggers. Right. Like they all like did the same photos, and I've always tried to have my own twist on like content creating. You can totally see on the blog side and in your videos that you create a very distinctive mood. And you've mentioned this, and actually the image behind us, <laughs> that's actually from your camera roll, and you were saying before that's kind of like your personal, like your monthly mood board here, yeah. right? Um, so like how do you cultivate that mood? I don't know. I love like finding beauty in little things, and I just... I'm always documenting that. And I think I've, I'm really inspired by the way people live their lives. So I, right. I do have like my own camera roll of things and my own private Instagram that I'm just like constantly uploading things. Right, but right. I think at one point I realized like I just want my blog to be like a mood board of my life. And that to me felt way more open. Right. Um, and just a lot more fun for me too. Yeah. Now it's interesting because it's definitely more open, but something that you had said earlier that I, I love this comment. YouTube actually compared to the blog is, is more intimate. 
It's actually yeah. a much more intimate experience with your audience. It's a way to connect more intimately. And that's really interesting because I think a lot of people would think, well, it somehow feels less intimate, less genuine because you're kind of out there just showcasing <laughs> the madness, whatever it is. Yeah. But you're right. You create this mood and this feeling of intimacy and you, you create video for the sake of trying to say something, not just for creating it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, something else that you had mentioned to me that I thought was cool is that it said that life is not always a, a Kardashian moment. I say that like in a really general sense because right. I think that we live in right now a culture where we're staring at our phones all day long and not even just staring at our phones. We're staring at a reflection of our phones. Right. Like, it's all Snapchat. It's all this. And right. that kind of is like a very Kardashian thing that they've influenced our culture Good, bad, or otherwise. Good, right, bad, yeah. or otherwise. And right. I love the Kardashians. Right, right, so. totally, right. But I think it's important to like being able to have an identity outside of that and not be too influenced by um, kind of all the Instagram girls who are like, oh, I'm, I woke up like this, but really they got lip injections, they have eyelash extensions. And it creates this standard of beauty that's like actually unattainable, but they make it look like this is how I woke up. Right. And... I wake up and I'm like, this is how I woke up. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's completely just right. raw, like you said. And, right. Um, and people see that. I mean, and they actually see, oh. Yeah. Right. And I try to, you know, um, share a mood and a perspective of my life. I want to share my own vision to the world. And I want to remind girls who are watching my channel that, you know, it doesn't have to be so done up. You don't, people don't actually wake up like that. And hopefully by just living and being able to share my perspective, girls can see it right. and see that there's another standard of beauty. You're still blogging, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you kind of bridge the gap from, you know, handwritten storytelling to visual storytelling? Well, I started my YouTube channel as an extension of my blog, right. but actually people are reading less blogs now, I think, right. and they're kind of just gravitating towards watching videos. So it was a very natural progression, and I think um, all the content and Everything that I do kind of live simultaneously, no matter what platform it is. But I love having the blog, too, because it's kind of like this very static way of capturing one moment in time. Right, right. And I love that versus videos, kind of like there's so many elements to make a video, like music, the way it's cut. Right, right. Every, there, there's so the thumbnail, many. Exactly. Right, the exactly. Thumbnail. What do you see kind of as the next, the next step? Because I know you talk to a lot of younger viewers and YouTubers and they probably look at your channel, look at the things you're doing and they're they're inspired. So what do you kind of see as like the next evolution of this? I would love to kind of just keep growing the channel and being able to have maybe more people help me create the channel so it becomes like a bigger platform. And I just want it to kind of be like this safe area for girls who are just a little like unsure where they are right now and just kind of need like a friend. Right. Because right. I think we live in a really lonely society right now as weird as it is as yeah. connected as we are no, you're I think right. it's almost even more lonely now you're right I think your video in the blog probably gives again younger girls maybe in similar backgrounds demographics kind of anyone that yeah. same feeling like oh there's someone who's done this yeah I hope it's yeah. almost like kind of seeing that light at the end of the tunnel right right because right. I remember like when I was younger I found solace in seeing like all these girls I, like all I could think about like I just want to be a party girl like, that's all I wanted to be when I was like, I want to be a socialite. I just want right. to, like, go out and have fun all the time. Right. And I remember seeing, like, this MySpace girl. Her name was Jack Vanek. Okay. And she was, like, so pretty to me and, like, just so cool and always at the coolest parties. But she always was flexing that she had, like, a master's at UCLA. Oh, right. And I was like, wow. Mm, okay. Clicked. Yeah, that's right. You can be smart and party. Right. Done. Done. So that's when right. I really, like, changed my perspective. And I really looked up to that. That's so essential to like the youth of today, right? That really you can you can be all things. Yeah. It's not one or the other. I think it used to be a feeling that if you did this, if you if you were the party or you were the, you know, the the, the rock oh, guy yeah. or whatever it was, that you couldn't you couldn't have a degree. You couldn't really have like a serious yeah. some kind of serious nature to you. you know? yeah. yeah, I think it's about finding like that independence in a world where you can almost mold into anyone or anything, and it's. It's a matter of like being able to see what you like and kind of bring it to yourself and kind of, you know, work 
in this recipe for yourself, like make your own recipe and not like follow the recipe. That brings up a good point because obviously, yeah, you use Instagram, you're, you're using, you know, you use Snapchat. Um, what are your thoughts kind of on like what that's doing to people in general? Because oh, I mean, gosh. listen, it's like an hour long cycle yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> well, and, but you're, you're in fashion, so it must be hard, right? I mean, surely you want to go on there and show your, your best face, your best look, but yet you, you, you don't seem to have any trouble, you know, showing that raw side. How do you kind of translate that to others that it's okay? It's scary. Yeah. I mean, like there's so much to be said about social media, especially like having that much access at a young age. It's like, I can only imagine like how many clicks are being formed and like how it alienates girls from feeling like, oh, I'm not part of this party. It's very like FOMO-y, FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, like fear of missing fear out. Fear of missing out, yes. Yeah, and I'm trying to just be comfortable in my own skin. Believe in what you are, you're you, mm -hmm. be a great version of you. Be a great version, I love that. Yes, right. and I'm hoping that like girls can eventually help each other out with that right. and not be so so alienating right. with each other. Help each other, I love each that. Other. That's yeah. right, yeah. You've kind of always been yourself. You've kind of always sought out being able to do things in this very open and honest way oh, and always have and having something to say no and I really I think that's extremely valuable and I love the idea of keeping the blog going because as you said that's that's like the written archive of your life I mean 10 years of my life documented is kind of the coolest thing it's kind of amazing because like even though like it's it it is very superficial each post is kind of tied to a memory that isn't like prominent right and I can tie it back to like oh I remember when I took that and who took that photo right. for me and it's real I mean and that's I think that's the key is that each one of those entries each one of those selfies that you've taken it's like an entity in its own it is it is and it's real and it's you and it really comes through so crystal clear oh well thank you that was really that's really nice of you and I'm, I'm glad that you're saying that because that's what I want to be and I, I, I self-doubt myself too as far as like am I doing the right thing am I selling out you know it's really it, there are questions I have too, but yeah. it's very. That says sweet. you're creative right there, right? <laughs> yes. The other side would be that you just hate all of it and wish it, were, it would all be gone and you want to redo it all. Yeah, that's, the I'm always going the, that. that's right, the two sides of the creative personality. Well, Rachel, thank you so much again. Oh, for joining thank us. you so it's much. It's such for a having pleasure me. to have you here on Make It. And don't forget that every week on Make It, we'll have new episodes showcasing incredible creatives in photography, video, design, fashion, blogging, everything you can possibly imagine, showcasing incredibly talented artists from all over the world. We're so happy to have you join us. Join us each week right here on The Make It Show. Thank you again. We will see you next time.